I'll say a few words about uh, the last 10 years of my life, which have been changed by uh, video lectures instead of lectures in class. Or they may be my classes, uh, but they're taped, and, they're, and MIT made them available on open courseware. So that's MIT's uh, courses, and the letters are OCW for open courseware, so the, the video link would be ocw.mit.edu, uh, and many MIT courses are included, but only about 20 or 30 with video. My idea was that uh, to, at the beginning, 10 years ago, to, set an, to show by example that it was not difficult to have uh, the courses uh, on video, and you have some permanent record. In, in, instead of uh, uh, giving the lecture, saying goodbye to the students, leaving the room, nobody remembers, uh, when it's on tape, it's there to look again. So my class is, my first class is about linear algebra, which means matrices. So a, matri a vector, a matrix, um, understanding the inverse of a matrix, the eigenvalues of a matrix. Um, the eigenvectors of a matrix, all, all about matrices. It's a normal undergraduate course. Um, it's, it can be pure mathematics. It becomes a kind of learning experience for how to do simple pure mathematics before the difficult part. But also, for, the, for more people, it's a useful thing because matrices are what computers, linear equations, are what computers can solve. So it's very, very important. More people use matrix theory than calculus, I think. Our courses have more calculus, but I think uh, more people use, in the end, use linear algebra. So that's how the MIT course 18.06 is organized. A lot of students take it. Almost every university in the world would teach a linear algebra course. So anyway, those, the video lectures of the MIT class went onto the web, along with physics, chemistry, biology, other lectures. For me, it's, I created the lectures, and then uh, I, I don't examine the students. If you're watching anywhere in the world, and about three million viewers so far, maybe four million now, um, so it's amazing. I can be walking, I was walking on the streets of Spain. Somebody came, came up and said, are you Professor Strang? Do you teach linear algebra on open courseware? Yes. Uh, and, and usually they say thank you, or email says thank you. It's a very nice experience. The exams are also separately on the web, but, it, but open courseware is not um, a complete course where you have homework and you have examinations. It's just there to watch. It's there for other teachers to see what topics could be included, how are they taught. And it's uh, for students who are taking a linear algebra course in Berlin or in Shanghai. They write and say thank you. We're happy to see uh, a separate uh, uh, dis discussion of linear algebra. Now I have to say that this is changing. This, this 
more, um, give the lecture, F 50, my lectures are 50 minutes, and, um, and let the user watch. The change is now lectures are 10 minutes. The website for the new courses can give homeworks. You submit the solution electronically. The homeworks are graded electronically. No, because maybe 100,000 students are taking the course all over the world. It's bringing a big change, or it started a big change in, in education. And it's a change we don't know where it's going. It's too new to see what's happening. And if you take examinations and do homework, then there should be a, a system to give credit for it. Yes, I took that course. I did the work. If I go, I can go on to a next course. A university will say, yes, you understood that. Because I've taken an examination to show that it's understood. So this is the situation now of uh, what are universities going to do? And MIT is now wants to be among the leaders, always, to see where we're going. So we're just starting on that road, and I have not myself taken that path yet. My, uh, my lectures are still the 10 years old uh, see the, listen to the, to the lecture, and then go and think about it separately. But the new system is a complete course. Um, so that's called MITx. If you Google the letters MITx, you will see, or edx for education x, uh, where MIT is connected, is joining with Harvard and University of Texas and more. It allows uh, people to take the course in the evening if, if they're working. They don't have to be at a university. And they may be simply interested in the subject. It's wonderful how many people want to learn about science and math and mathematics. It's super to think that it can be seen not just by a class of 100 at MIT, but by a class of 1 million. Um, so that's where it's going. There are many, many questions about it because there's n it's not very personal. The student has questions. Uh, but, but the student is not together with the professor. And that's an important thing which is lost. But, so we have some gains. The lower cost, the wider distribution, and we have some losses of personal interaction. And, uh, well, videos will get better. We'll learn better how to do this. But I'm happy that I could, under, could have the experience at a middle point when it was classes of the old type, but online, to uh, see that transition between uh, the original, the tutor that you worked with, then it became a class at a university, then it became an online lecture to watch, and now it becomes a full-scale online course. It's good to think about how, about teaching mathematics compared to teaching history. Um, I think with mathematics you need a blackboard. You need to show the symbols. It's not wherein if I tell you about the history of, of uh, the United States, something. There, I don't need, uh, I don't need the same graphs. I don't need to illustrate, uh, I don't need symbols, it's just words. But it's not difficult to have a blackboard to, to prepare uh, 
slides in advance that that a good 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 uh, 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 imaging. So I think mathematics is okay. The, the biggest problem is the missing the contact, personal contact with a professor. So the big question is, and these are often called MOOCs, M-O-O-C, for massive meaning big, online open courses. Um, so, and they do have 100,000 students. The first one, maybe, or an early one, was at Stanford University for a course on artificial intelligence. And that had 250,000 students signed up. They didn't all complete the course. Maybe 20,000 completed the course. But still, 20,000 students is much more than my class. So it was, it was a big signal to universities and to presidents of universities that something was happening. It's too soon to know where this will go. Uh, it's being, it, it has forces behind it of, of making open access easy, of using the computers, using that transmission, uh, but it has the drawbacks of not being personal. How do we know that the student in Mongolia who takes the class is the one who takes the exam? What uh, security is lost? Everything, it's, it's a different world. I think it's too soon to say where, what will happen. But I guess the momentum is so that uh, we're going to see this is going to this is coming.